So today I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Carolyn Dean, who's been at the forefront of health issues for over 40 years and is the leading expert on magnesium. Dr. Dean is a medical doctor, naturopath, herbalist, acupuncturist, nutritionist, and inventor who has authored and co-authored over 35 books. Our discussion will provide just a glimpse of the content that I found in her second edition of Dr. Dean's book on, that called The Magnesium Miracle. And today we're going to speak about the role of magnesium in bone health. When individuals are told that they have osteoporosis, they're recommended to take the vitamin D and their calcium. Many naturopathic doctors will still prescribe 5,000 international units of vitamin D. But as we know, studies in the past five years have shown that high vitamin D levels do not reduce fracture risk, but can rather negatively impact bone density and bone quality. So I've asked Dr. Dean to share her views on the role of magnesium, vitamin D, and calcium when it comes to our bone health. Yes, that, that's a very important topic. Um, you also need vitamin K2 and collagen. 60% of the magnesium in the body is located in our bones. 60% magnesium in our bones. But when they talk about, well, what makes up the bones, they're just saying calcium and phosphorus. They, I mean, they if they even talk about magnesium, it's only a tiny bit. But magnesium is found in and helps um, produce, uh, manufacture the collagen in the connective tissue um, of your body that helps uh, create the soft matrix onto which the calcium uh, bonds. So if you don't talk about collagen, you're really not looking at the whole picture of bone. Um, collagen also needs vitamin C in order to produce it. And magnesium, it's um, important for the production of um, hyaluronic acid and hydroxyapatate, all the things we know about the soft matrix of bone. And there's one study, um, I quote, the effect of magnesium ions on osteoblasts. Osteoblasts make bone. And um, from the abstract, they say magnesium ions induced significant increase in cell viability, alkaline phosphatase activity, and osteocalcin levels of human osteoblasts. These stimulatory actions were positively associated with the concentration of magnesium and the time of exposure. So the more magnesium and the longer time you took magnesium, the more osteoblasts you got. So isn't that amazing? I mean, to me, that if a calcium researcher doesn't look at magnesium, they're missing the whole picture. And they've also there are also studies that magnesium deficiency results in increased formation of osteoclasts, which break down bone. So if you don't have enough magnesium, you're breaking down bone, losing bone. And we know that the the drugs, the bisphosphonates, kill osteoclasts, making the bones brittle. So very important um, magnesium in bone formation and bone health. And also this soft tissue matrix in bones, it's, it's going to hold water. It's going to, you know, be soft tissue, make the bones flexible and pliable. And as you get older, you know, we talk about, oh, you're going to shrink and everything. Well, that's your soft, soft bone uh, tissue you know, collapsing and dehydrating and getting brittle and just leaving like a piece of chalk, you know, calcium carbonate, you drop it, it shatters. If you don't have your, your collagen with your vitamin C and your magnesium and all of that going for you. So I'm going to dive into two nutrients specifically. And in your book, you have a really lovely section talking about the dance of calcium and magnesium. So if we just stick mm -hmm. to those two nutrients, it might make things a little bit easier. Recognize right. that they're dancing amongst all these other nutrients. Yes. We talk about magnesium, calcium being antagonistic. Well, you know, they're, they're sort of kissing cousins. Um, magnesium is responsible for opening up, opening up cell mineral ion channels to allow calcium into muscle cells, 
and nerve cells. So the calcium goes in and creates an action potential, a movement, and then the cell channel opens again and calcium is ushered out. And that opening and closing is guarded by magnesium. Same with the nerves. The um, calcium goes in, fires off a nerve, uh, a nerve function impulse, nerve impulse, and then the calcium comes out. If there's not enough um, magnesium to do that job, more and more calcium comes into the cells and they just fire away and, and get all activated until they die. <laughs> and that's your spasms and your twitches and all the rest of it. So that, that's their dance. And in order to do that dance, I mean, you probably need equal amounts of calcium and magnesium, which I say you can usually get 600 milligrams of calcium from a diet that has dairy products and your leafy greens and your sardines with bones. And then you need to take uh, um, supplemental forms of, of magnesium, you know, 450 milligrams a day, for example, uh, along with your 150 you might be getting from your diet. So a lot of people ask me, you know, when I mentioned that your book and magnesium and the important role that magnesium plays, they go, well, will it help improve my bone density or make my bones stronger? So what would you say to that? I think that, you know, we we went over that in the previous question where if you've your magnesium is helping the production of that soft tissue matrix, which uh, takes up 30 to 40 percent of your bone. So the magnesium is important for building the scaffolding onto which the calcium will deposit calcium and phosphates and um, magnesium does direct calcium to the bones as does vitamin k2 but i know when i started researching the whole area and unfortunately there are a lot of early studies on the effect of calcium in bones and vitamin d in bones but we don't often see just a study with magnesium or magnesium and calcium or you know, mm -hmm. you, are you familiar with any studies just so that I... Yes, in the book, I, I don't have it memorized in my head, but in the Magnesium Miracle book, I, I did find some good studies showing that uh, people that took magnesium helped their bone density even more than people just taking calcium. So right. it's again about the matrix. You know, if you have a good foundation to build onto... But if you don't have the foundation, you can't build anything. I have one more question in this regard. Um, so, so there are many supplement companies, as you know, and many of them guarantee your money back um, if your DEXA does not improve. And my understanding is that in these supplements, although they might be, you know, saying how great their calcium is, they most often have strontium which my understanding is it replaces calcium in the bone. And in doing so, it attenuates the DEXA reading because it's a heavier mineral. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. although the reading is higher and people get excited, do you know how this corresponds to, to improved bone strength or maybe a worsening of bone strength? Um, and do you recommend right. supplements containing strontium? Right. right. No, I never got behind strontium. Um, when you look up strontium, you find out that, yes, it is natural to be in bone, but I think it was something like a thousand milligrams per gram. And when I looked that up, it's 0.0001% of the bone is strontium. So it's like minuscule. So when they're talking about using, you know, hundreds of milligrams of magnesium of strontium for for bone density, that's a medicine. There, that's a drug, and so I stay away from it because that's, you know, for all the reasons you mentioned, you know, makes the bones too dense. Is it making the bones brittle? Can the the osteoclasts uh, that remodel your bone? And do they know what to do with strontium uh, like they do with with uh, the calcium crystal that are formed? Are they remodeling the strontium or just does it just stay there and make the bone brittle? I don't know all those answers. I just I just sort of walked away from strontium when I first started hearing about it. Okay, that's really helpful. Just, you know, because you have a, such a unique background and 
I did want to ask you that question. So thank you for, for that. And so as we wrap up uh, magnesium and bone health, is there anything else you'd like to share? Did we talk about the research out of uh, New Zealand where Dr. Boland found that women who take uh, high dose cal calcium supplements are subject to increased calcification and potentially heart disease? The first, uh, first uh, section, yeah. Right, right. So that's important to, to consider that when you're looking for your calcium, um, go for your diet. And, and we have mentioned this, 600 milligrams a day is what uh, the UK and the World Health Organization advises. In our RDAs from our public health department, they're recommending 1,200, 1,500 milligrams. And most doctors are, are finding that that's probably too much these days. But what they don't add to the picture is that you should be taking magnesium in equal amounts so that uh, you build up the soft tissue matrix for the bone to deposit on, for the calcified bone to deposit. Yes, that's a, that was a real eye opener for me. So thank you very much for sharing that. And I want to thank you for writing your book, The Magnesium Miracle, which provides so much important guidance on both the, for healthcare professionals and lay persons on the role of magnesium in the health of our bones. Thank you, Dr. Dean. Uh, thank you, Margaret. And call me Carolyn for Pete's sakes. And thank you for what you do. I mean, you're out there in the trenches. I, I you know, I'm doing my research and I have a company. I'm not dealing one-on-one -on -one with patients, but you, I do have customer service that sort of mimics what, what I've done through my whole life. So, you know, we, we just have to keep educating people either one-on-one -on -one or in, in big groups. And your podcasts, I mean, I think they're reaching hundreds of thousands of people. So it's just fantastic what you're doing. If you're looking for more information on bone health and nutrition, I've created a playlist just for you. Thank you for joining me and I wish you a lovely day.